If you like the video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. My friends, welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking. We bring you the inside tips. I always do that. The inside tips on making great digital video. And we built a Hackintosh. Again. Because we love doing this. <laughs> My friends, it's time to upgrade. Now, as with every creator seeking to get the most out of their toolkit, there comes a time when you outgrow your current computer build. I squeezed every bit of performance I could out of my old daily driver, which was a Hackintosh build from 2017. If you haven't seen our video on the Hackintosh that we built back in March of 2017, go watch it, please. At least for the amazing job that our actors did in our Hackintosh sketch. Okay, so it's time to upgrade. Now, like I said, my old system was stuck on Mac OS Sierra. Yeah, not even High Sierra, but Sierra. Also, the processor was an i7-6700K, which has four cores, eight threads. And we started getting more Premiere work. We started getting more After Effects work. And hell, we were getting work that was in Final Cut. But the final nail in the coffin was the latest update to the Adobe suite, which rendered all my apps incompatible since I was still on Mac OS Sierra and they don't support that anymore. So Frank and I decided it was finally time to upgrade the old Hackintosh. Back to the future! All right, now before you start asking about why not save some money and switch to Windows, once again, I direct you to please watch the previous Hackintosh video we did because I answered a lot of those questions. But the short story is I love working in Mac OS, period. And with a Hackintosh, I can pay PC prices and end up with both a Mac and a Windows machine. Now, note, this is not a tutorial. Now, I'll leave some links to some fantastic creators who do that sort of thing for the Hackintosh community in the description below. Now, I'll also leave links to the Hackintosh form where I got my build guide for this very machine. So if you consider building a Hackintosh, stick around. I'll give you enough of an overview about what you're going to have to do to build one. And I'll also let you in on a few pitfalls that weren't mentioned in any guide anywhere and how we solved them here at the Pixel Valley. Now, the first thing you need to get right when building a Hackintosh is the hardware. And while you can get certain bits of hardware to work, I went with the stuff that was already tested by the large Hackintosh community. This wasn't my first Hackintosh build, so I knew to keep things simple. Apple makes hardware and they make software, and they make the software to work with the hardware they use. So in the Hackintosh community, we try and get hardware that's exactly or very similar to that hardware, so that the software just thinks it's running on a Mac. So I can't stress this enough. Once again, get the right hardware. Do your research before buying anything so that your Mac OS build can be pretty smooth. Got it? All right, so what's the new build? First, we start with a the processor is an Intel Core i9-9900K, 3.6 gigahertz, eight core processor. Why not go with a blazing fast AMD Ryzen processor? Well, it all comes down to the level of compatibility that I wanted to maintain. See, real Macs don't run on AMD, at least not yet. Also, as far as I know, getting things like FaceTime and Siri and iMessage to work on an AMD processor is still extremely difficult on an AMD Hackintosh build, so I chose the fastest, most affordable Intel processor that I could. And since I screwed up before by getting a four core processor, I wanted to at least double that in this build. So the i9-9900K will serve as a great choice for the Mac side. Maybe be a pretty good Windows gaming machine because because I'm, I'm a gamer, I like the game. Game, I said game again, game. The motherboard is a Gigabyte Z390 Designare or Designari, as some people say. It's almost as if Gigabyte designed this motherboard for Hackintoshers. It has a steep price, but it's the most compatible with Mac OS. It's the most compatible that I could find in my own research, right down to the onboard Thunderbolt 3. Now, this is the most bling board I think I've ever purchased, and it'll be a killer for Mac OS as well as Windows because games. Let's talk RAM. ram a lama ding dong for the RAM, I got the HyperX Predator Black 3600 megahertz DDR4, 32 gigabytes of that. So the motherboard supports 3600 megahertz DDR4 RAM sticks. So I threw two by 16 in there for a total of 32. 
for handling the heavy stuff, and I plan to update that to 64 gigs very soon. For storage, I went with the Samsung 860 Evo Pro SSD, which is 512 gigabytes, and a Western Digital Black 500 gigabyte NVMe drive. So I went with a 512 gigabyte SSD for the Mac OS boot drive to keep all my applications and stuff. Since I rely heavily on our 14 terabyte NAS for file storage, I didn't find it necessary at this time to install a larger boot drive. I'll probably upgrade this to a one terabyte M.2 drive later, but right now it's all good. Also, I have a 256 gigabyte Crucial SSD installed and formatted to XFAT32 to act as a standalone cache drive for both the Mac and Windows. This way I can point all my Adobe apps and whatever else to a speedy, dedicated cache location, taking the load off of all my boot drives. That's something to think about. Let's talk graphics. We have an AMD Radeon 7, 16 gigabyte of high speed memory on that sucker. Now here's the newest addition to the family. Look Ma, it's not an Nvidia card. Cats and dogs living together. Okay, so as you may know, or you may not know, Apple and Nvidia are no longer friends. So Apple doesn't want Nvidia tech in their hardware and Nvidia no longer supports Mac OS, Mojave and above. You stopped sending me flowers. Compatibility is still a priority with this build, which is why I had to go with the fastest available card that I could from Team Red, natively supported in Mac OS Mojave. Now some folks smarter than me may have been able to get an Nvidia card to work in Mojave, but when I dropped this AMD card in, it just works. It's fully supported in Mac OS 10.14.5 and above. Also, Final Cut sports some major optimizations for AMD cards. Now, I don't, we don't use Final Cut as our daily driver, but we do sometimes get, get clients who supply us with Final Cut projects that we have to be able to read and use. And last but not least, definitely not least for power, we went with an EVGA 1000 watt power supply, gold power supply. Originally, I intended to use my existing 850 watt power supply, but for reasons that I will mention later, I found that I needed to move up to a new beefier PSU. And that's mostly because of that Radeon card. Holy smokes. Now, I'm not a benchmarking fiend. Like, I didn't run and immediately load up, you know, Geekbench or anything, but I wanted to see how much of an improved system I have, so I rendered a project on my old Hackintosh and on my new one. Just to let you know, the old system took 19 minutes to render this product and project, and the new system rendered the same project in nine minutes. So I'll take a 10 minute savings any day. Now my plan was to save as much money as I could, so I decided to reuse my case and my power supply. The case worked just fine but the system would reboot itself under heavy graphics load. And it didn't matter if I was running Mac or Windows, no error logs or anything, just a reboot. I thought I had a bad video card, but it turned out that my old 850 watt power supply just couldn't cut it anymore. It was about seven or eight years old and just couldn't keep up with those times when the system asked for a bunch of power at once. And that AMD Radeon 7 eats power for breakfast. For breakfast. Well, that's just ridiculous. It's got a power draw rated at 295 watts maximum. My old GTX 1080 card topped out at only 180 watts. So I purchased a brand new 1000 watt gold power supply. And now the system runs like a champ. So if you're gonna recycle components, make sure they all fit the bill. Make sure they work really well. Oh, and one other thing you might wanna consider when starting uh, this project is to use a mature version of Mac OS. Oh, yeah. Not like that. I mean, when I built this machine, Mac OS Catalina was just hitting the street. But I opted to start from a later version of Mojave. This way I could avoid some early OS issues that always pop up when a new version comes out. Mojave was already at version 10.14.6 and I figured I didn't want to use Catalina fresh out of the box. I wanted to use a version of the OS that was kind of already tried and true. So maybe go back one revision before you start this so that everything you do is covered and uh, move forward from there. Total bummer, dude. I check this out. Looking at the Apple Store, a comparable system to the one that we built would cost us about $6,000. And that's their low-end Mac Pro. 
This one in total only cost about 2,200. For about the third of the price, I have a Mac that's faster and a Windows 10 machine thrown in for games. Yes. But the downside to all of this is, well, I don't get any support or Apple care. And one update can break the system. So I have to do a full backup before updating and read a bunch of forums to stay on top of it all. But this is what I do. I mean, I'm a PC builder and I think I can handle it. If building PCs is not for you, then buying a proper Mac may be a better solution. So that's it. I'm running uh, Adobe Suite. I'm running DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, all on my new Hackintosh. It's a fun ride. Let me know in the comments section if you're considering building a Hackintosh or if you think I'm absolutely crazy for even trying. Love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Once again, thanks for watching. Check out PullMyFocus.tv for all our companion articles that go along with these videos. And if you're considering uh, us a, a benefit to you, please become a patron at patreon.com forward slash PullMyFocus. Buy our courses at PullMyFocus.tv forward slash courses. And let me know how your Hackintosh turns out if you uh, decide to build one. And with that, you're gonna go play some games. Games. Woo! Not in, not in, not in Mac though. I gotta reboot. Damn it. <laughs>